This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. My name is Brian Barchek. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, I'll be catching freshwater crocodiles and blue tongue skinks. You're watching Snake Bites. So I'm here with Erin, and she's brought me up this extremely sketchy road into the middle of nowhere because she says that there's dwarf crocs in these waters up here. So Erin, where the hell have you brought me, and what are we about to see? Well, um, Brian, this is upstream escarpment country. This is like the, this is the really rocky, remote country that we find these, what we call dwarf or pygmy crocodiles. And they live in these creeks up here, and there's very little food, and they're cut off from the main population of crocodiles, and they don't get very big. They look exactly like other freshwater crocodiles, except they're much smaller. We're going to have a look for them down in this creek here. And I have found freshwater crocodiles in this creek before, so it is a good place to look for them. So Aaron, this looks like uh, just like the spot that you were saying would be perfect. Now, without making me seem too inept at what I'm doing, can you give me the ground rules exactly if we see one? What am I supposed to do? Well, this is a very good place to look for freshwater crocodiles. I've found them here before. Um, we, if we're so lucky to find one in these creeks, uh, in, when they're underneath the water, just grab them really fast behind the back of the neck and just get a really firm grip. All right, well, I think I'm ready to give this a shot. Let's go find a fresh crop. Yeah. Aaron, I'm, uh, I know I'm an American and all, but uh, it does seem a little strange that we're wading around in this water and my toes are so exposed and we're looking for crocodiles. <laughs> Is this a smart thing to do? Just got to remember, they're more scared of you than we could ever be of them. All right, I'm gonna trust you. I'm not even sure exactly what I'm looking for. So what, what are we looking at here? They might be just sitting on the edge, underneath the water, just um, right on the edges and things like that. Hey, it looks like a little crocodile just around the corner here, if you can have a look. Where's he at? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hello. Oh, we'll see if we can catch him before he scuffs. Oh, is he going up against the bank? Hey. Oh. <laughs> That's a great catch. Oh. My gosh, what a beauty. <laughs> Those little teeth are definitely something that look a lot more ominous than I expected. Yeah, it's beautiful looking. Oh, it's a gorgeous animal. I tell you what, it's probably a good three foot long or so. Now, do they get much larger than this? They do get quite a little bit larger than that. The males, particularly. Uh, females, not that much larger when they can reach maturity. So quite a difference from the uh, downstream population of freshwater crocodiles. It's amazing. Now, oh, did you hear that little sound? <laughs> oh, that's They're just so vocalizing cute. in distress. That's a... This is yeah. just incredible. Oh, I better not get those jaws too close to my face. You can see it was just kind of eyeballing me. So this, this guy is a, is a pygmy or dwarf freshwater crocodile, but the, even though they reach smaller sizes in the mainstream population, they actually don't have any differences. They're just a miniature crocodile. All right, so basically this is just like a normal freshwater croc, just a miniature version. Yes, exactly, they're the same, so just smaller. So it's just quite amazing that this animal, is this breeding size, could actually breed this size? He's still a little bit small for breeding, this one, but uh, they do grow very slowly, so. Now what is it, these are mainly fish eaters or in the, you know, what, what's the difference? Fish there? and vertebrates like, uh, or crustaceans as well, and frogs and things is their main sort of food source. They're not grabbing anything big. Right. They're more interested in what's available in the water. So these guys are relatively endangered or are they common in these parts? Uh, they were common, but since the cane toads have moved into this, this environment, uh, they've, they're suddenly, they're, they just cannot resist this food source of this toad. And numbers have really plummeted in some populations, and it's quite dramatic. Yeah, it seems to be a problem with all animals in Australia. Well, I tell you what, I think today our mission was accomplished. This animal is absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna go ahead and put him back in the water so that he doesn't stress out too much. Now that we've let this little bugger back go, he's settled right into this little nook here. And I really wanna take this underwater camera and get a different view of him. Gotta be careful, of course, because he can still swing around and get my hand or, or even get the camera. But it seems to be pretty chill right now. It's pretty safe right here in this little nook. 
All right, let's go ahead and let this little guy go. Don't need to stress him out anymore. Aaron, yeah. this was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for your expertise knowing where these guys are found. Yeah, no problem. It's really made this adventure worthwhile. Now let's go find some 15 foot Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> So we just caught this northern blue tongue skink and I'm with Grant that's somewhat of an expert on these animals. There's no doubt where this animal got its name when you see that bright blue tongue. But I certainly have some other questions like tell me as much as you can about this animal. Let's start with the tongue. What's the deal with that blue tongue? Well apparently in nature um, both red and blue are sort of used as um, sort of threat colors. That's to hopefully scare off the um, potential predators. So look, they tend to flatten the body out open the mouth and at the same time they'll lunge out that big bright blue tongue so yeah to well, hopefully scare their it certainly makes off. sense because these little legs don't look like they run too fast no, right no. big fat body very short legs <laughs> slow locomotion <laughs> yeah they're more like hiding what uh now now what's interesting about these lizards are that they're live bearers right they are yes and how many babies would something like this have okay look blue tongues have been known to have up to 24 babies at a time but um, look, northern blue tongues it's normally around about probably 8 to about 12 and that's um, normally once a year Another thing that really strikes you as soon as you look at this animal are obviously are these ears that I'm seeing here. Why are they so unique looking? Oh, look, well, I think um, they've got quite good hearing actually. So yeah, so they're not nice big big openings to catch as much sound as possible. So often before you see them, look, they'll either see or hear you and, and scuttle off into the undergrowth. So. There are any other defense mechanisms? I mean, what does this guy do to stay alive? Okay, look, they do bite very hard. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we want to keep away yeah. from the front a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah, and often when they do bite a human, look, they refuse to let go and actually quite hard to get off. And the best way to get them to let go is let the bo uh, animal's body touch the ground. That way they feel a bit more secure. They'll open the mouth up and they'll run off into the bush. What do these guys feed on out here in the bush? Look, out here in the bush, um, it's a, probably a range of um, plants insects and snails and snails seem to be one of their favorite food items but they tend to only have access to snails here in the top end during the wet season but the rest of the year the snails tend to be burrowed down into the ground and not accessible well i tell you what this animal is really incredible it's really a great find and i tell you the more i'm messing with it the more i'm loving it look at that little blue tongue we're going to go ahead and let this little bugger go let it get back into the wild She's in a hurry. <laughs> There's some pretty interesting characters in Australia, and we're about to meet up with one of them. He's what they refer to as a bush poet. He lives way out in the bush, and he writes really cool poetry. All right, so I guess they call us septics down here because it's a rhyming slang. And of course, septic tanks rhymes with yanks, so therefore, we're just septics. It's crazy logic. Waldo, you here? Yeah, someone called. Yeah, hey Waldo, how are, how are you? you? Keeping, mate? My name is Brian. Pleased I'm to meet you. Traveling around Australia just on some really cool animal adventures, but I want to get to know about the Australian culture. And everywhere I go, your name Waldo, the bush poet, comes up. You think you can help me out just learning a little bit about the culture? Yeah, I think I can really because uh, you know we came out here what a couple of hundred years ago for being bad. This guy is Australian down to the core, and he's a lot of fun. All right, so Waldo, as I'm traveling around this incredibly beautiful country, I find myself getting tripped up by your Australianisms. Yeah, Things uh, like, uh, again, calling us septics because we're septic tanks rhyming yeah. with Yanks. And so what is it when I'm out and about in your culture that as a Yank, I need to know? Hey, you going, mate? That one I've got. How are you yeah, going, how mate? You going, I can mate? do that. You would have got that from yeah. Paul Hogan with the yeah. horns on the Barbie and that. <laughs> exactly. How are you uh, going, mate? And also, when you start to get out to a few of the country pubs and towns, the um, up north toward Queensland, people tend not to speak really quickly. They start to slow down a bit, mm -hmm. mate. Right. And uh, are you been out to the rodeo lately? And you say, you mean the rodeo? Say, no, rodeo or rodeo. Um, 
and you got your, you've got in, in America you got the Broncos, uh, the Bronx. Um, I don't mean the the place called the Bronx. I mean uh, your horses are called right. Bronx and mm -hmm. that. Yep. And out here we got Brumbies. Brumbies. Now yeah. a Brumby is a horse. A Brumby is a wild horse. Um, okay, so I've got good A mate. Yeah. I got Brumbies if I run into wild horses. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so yeah. I'm getting to start now. Yeah. So what else? Right. What and, else? Uh, you call them movies over there. We just call them pictures out here. Pictures. Yeah, picture shows and. Picture um, shows. <laughs> Yeah. Now I, I noticed that. Uh, uh, what's the term, you guys, when you're just chatting and talking? You, you call it yawning or chin wagging? What? Yeah, just having a bit of a yarn. Yeah, yarn. sit down okay. and have a yarn with your mate. You know. Yeah, where did that come from? And, where, uh, where it, who yeah. owns that bloody dingo out there? That's my bull terrier. He's a pig dog. Looks like a mongrel dingo to me. <laughs> so mongrel means it could be about six different uh, breeds. Oh, okay, so yeah, we call them mixed breeds. So you yeah, guys call them mongrels. mongrels <laughs> and, yeah. How many poems have you written over the years? I'd say about oh, a bit over 400 poems now. Um, I failed English geography and maths and and now I'm teaching poetry to school teachers. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's just an unbelievable journey that we've uh, that I've been on, and you know it's interesting that I, you know I'm amazed that you're able to recite all these poems that you obviously have written for many years. My name is Bob. I'm a big green frog, and I live down there just near the log, with one small egg out on the pond. With all my friends, we all did bond, floating out there for days and days, <sighs> being blown around the waterways. Then one day my life unfolds, and I become a black tadpole. I have a face, some lips, a tail, but definitely don't have a sail. To move about I have to swim with bugs and creatures and worms so thin. One day my body changed so quick, my legs popped out, I'm on a stick. Jump so high, land on a log. Now look at me kids, I'm a green tree frog. Nature works in wondrous ways, so it looks like that we're here to stay. The world out there across the plain, the billabong, the sun, the rain, it's all a miracle life out here. We eat and drink and have no fear. You see children, it's all very hard to explain, but we're all part of a huge food chain. So if you see a frog out on the farm, just say good day. Bring him no harm, because he eats flies and bugs and mozzies too and then you see they can't bite you. I'll say goodbye, look there's a dog, and he's just licked a big green frog. I can't thank you enough for your time and, and your hospitality out here. It certainly has opened my eyes to a completely different culture, not only of Australia, but someone as unique as you, and uh, it's been an awesome experience. I thank you so much, Waldo. Look, that's Congratulations for coming out here and yeah. thank you very much. It's been proud to meet you. Absolutely, thank you so much. Yeah. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as I enjoyed catching that really cool freshwater croc. And as always, I'm Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snakebites TV and on Instagram at snakebites.tv. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Welcome to the Conservation Files. My name is Ben Desson, and for as long as I can remember, I've been incredibly passionate about wildlife and the environment. In this series, I'm gonna showcase some amazing wildlife. This is ABTV.